Welcome back, Bullfighter, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. We're returning to the land of the skaters with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Hangar is the first stage in the game, and it's extremely reminiscent of the first stage in the original game. The most notable difference to me is that this stage is much brighter. Whereas textures and warehouse feel dark and dingy, this is a bit more welcoming. Maybe not super welcoming considering this is an abandoned hangar, but still, somewhat more welcoming. As is video game world tour tradition, I think it's best to start off by turning around and looking at the area where you spawn in. Much like Warehouse, you start at the top of a hill and roll down. But unlike Warehouse, this doesn't have a room for you to skate around in. It's a dead end. Where you start in Warehouse made sense as a space. I could imagine a room like this existing. This? I don't know. Why would such a steep slope be built here? There'd be no use for it in a hangar. And would someone repurposing this hangar for a skate park really go to the trouble to cut out part of the wall here and build the slope into it? Only for there to be nothing at the top? Like how would a normal non-video game character get up here? At the foot of the slope are these… what would you even call this? A net? Some fabric that's just been disintegrating over the years? I guess that answer makes more sense. I always saw this as a net though, for some reason. There's also the secret room that you can access by grinding on this propeller. I never really thought about it until now, but this is a wind tunnel. You got the big old fan there, and the airplane here, all set up to test the aerodynamics of it. I... Uh, the aerodynamics don't seem so good. It's swaying from side to side pretty heavily. Maybe they were still working on things when the nuclear apocalypse happened and they had to abandon this facility. There's a lot of frost on the fan. Tony must be freezing his hawk off right now. The hangar is split into two sections with this partition here. Wait, how were workers supposed to get to the other side of the barrier? There's no doors cutting through it. Maybe there were some on the side that the quarter pipes got placed over at some point. Tony bursts through panes of glass without a care in the world, and his eyes are drawn to one thing. The helicopter. It calls to him. It's begging. Please, Tony, grind my blades. You must. Tony gives in. The trucks of his board gently caress them, and the copter takes off, never to see him again. A short, intimate moment over as quickly as it started. An intimate moment which reveals a new area. A simple square space outside of the hangar. I love this spot. It's so moody. Hanging out in the moonlight with a light snowfall. And look at the sky, there's some funky lighting going on. Could that be the Northern Lights? This stage takes place in Montana, so it's possible. And look at the huge snow piles just outside of the play space. Very convenient that it's not piling up where you can skate around. Marseille is the game's first competition stage. I like the time of day and lighting used here. I feel like it's easy to forget just how big of an impact the time of day can have on a stage. The sunset turning everything here almost purple is so much more memorable than if it took place at noon and everything was grey. Looking past the boundaries of the stage, there's a lot of rolling hills. It kind of reminds me of Spyro the Dragon for some reason. There's almost a fantastical realism to this stage. Like there's all these realistic quarter pipes and generic clutter that make it feel like a real skate park. But just outside the fence, there's rolling hills that feel… fake. They're so steep and plentiful. Maybe this is just my limited experience of the world showing, but I can't imagine this existing naturally in real life. Something about these hills feels artificial. 
I guess the skybox plays into it too. Like I said, this really feels like a Spyro stage just past the fence here. Oh look, a poster for Spider-Man. Not any comic or show in particular, just Spider-Man. As with most competition stages, I don't have a lot to say, but there is one more area I want to talk about. On this side of the stage, there's a ledge with some grass and trees growing. I guess on its own this is kind of a weird spot, but we're here for one particular reason. This single plank of wood leaning against the lamppost. Seems inconsequential, no? What if I were to... Well, I guess that was a load-bearing wood plank. Before you is a hole in the ground with light pouring out of it. This feels fantastical too. Magical almost. Like going through this hole will teleport you to another dimension. Tony's done weirder. I say let's send him through. Huh. Well, this is definitely different. I'm trying to find the right words to describe this. It's so... majestic? These arches surrounding the room from all sides. Look at how big they are compared to Tony. And it looks like there's such an intricate pattern on them. Is this stone? Who built this? It looks like a hall where some underground secret society meets. I can imagine some ominous ritual being carried out in this fountain here. You know what I mean? Is anyone else getting those kind of vibes? I'm hoping this isn't based on a real-life location, and I don't look real stupid right about now. In terms of playable space, it's not really that interesting. There's a quarter pipe at the end, but there's nothing on the other side to send you back. And this grind doesn't really line you up to grind anything. You can't session in here too well. What I do think is interesting is how easy it is to miss this spot in the first place. I wonder how many people never ran into this plank of wood that knocks down the lamppost. Like, why would you want to ride in the grass instead of grinding the ledge? It seems like it'd be an easy spot to never notice and only learn about years later. Is there anyone watching this video just learning about this spot for the first time here? There's gotta be someone in that position watching this video. New York City is a big stage with a lot to see. At the end of the roads on this side of the stage, there's a little road work being done. Well, more than a little. It looks like they're doing an archaeological dig here. Why is this pit so deep? I can understand digging up the road to replace or touch it up, but would all this be necessary? Maybe. I'm not a road guy. Down these slopes is a little plaza. Now, I might be stupid, but I can't make out any of these store names. Equity Delters? Executive Coulters? Okay, well they made sure to give Joey's Place some respect. And just Joey's Place? Nothing more descriptive than that? Sure, fine. Well, it's for lease now. Maybe Jim's Spot will move in next. Heading back up, I think we should take a look at the obvious Central Park analog. It does feel kind of nice around here. In my mind, I kind of remembered this as a sort of nasty stage, but all these textures are very nice. I guess this weird curved brick wall is kind of an eyesore. How would that even work? A curved brick wall that you could skate up? Huh. Snack boy. Kind of hungry. I could go for something right now. Cold drinks, ice cream, snacks, crap. Okay, now that's just vulgar. Closed. Please call again. Why does it say, please call again? Why would that even be useful information for a sign on a shop that you physically walk up to? This game really is an enigma once you pay attention. I love it. The land on the other side of this little pond. The way it's just on the edge of the render distance and you can't get a good look at it. It's tantalizing. I wish I could skate over there. But alas, Tony is no swimmer will never see the mystical lands across the pond. If you're feeling like a daredevil, you can ride the rails of the train tracks and jump off at the end to reach a new section of the stage. It's kinda isolated over here. Lonely. Actually, I don't think there's a way for normal people to get over here. There's no doors or gates leading into this chunk of the city. 
I did forget about this rail you can grind while taking you over the wall. That's definitely more safe than going on the train tracks. But what if a non-skater wants to play basketball over here? Is this space built just for skaters? I wonder if level designers hate me for talking about game worlds like this. I do feel like kind of an asshole at times pointing out weird details, but just know, I do it out of love for the game. Quirks like this make a game feel unique. I brought this up in the first THPS video when talking about Maul, but these quote, real locations aren't supposed to be built for normal people. They're built for skaters. Why else would this cool ass area be locked off behind some sick grinds? And it really is a cool ass area. Like this quarter pipe in a recessed spot between two buildings. I've never seen anything this cool in my life. Or the previously mentioned basketball court. Such an exclusive court only usable by skaters. Of course, there's also the bottomless pit at the end of the train tracks as they reach into the tunnel. Wouldn't be New York City without a bottomless pit. The Bullring is another of the game's many competition stages. And they got a little weird with it, considering this is the final stage in the game. Not technically, but that's a story for another video. The stage starts off with a helicopter absolutely freaking out and crashing. The whole stage shakes like Godzilla just woke up. Kind of a non sequitur in terms of level design, but hey, can't fault them for starting the stage off with a bang. Honestly, I don't have much to say about this stage. These competitions don't give me much to talk about. But as always, I do have a couple things to mention. It's fun to skate around the center area and do your skater thing, but in your travels, you might notice that you can get up into the stands. Granted, it's only this little ledge, but I'll take it. It feels like you're breaking the game's boundaries with that. Like you're being somewhere you're not supposed to, even if it's obvious they did consider it. I'm a sucker for areas like that, where you think you know the boundaries of the stage, but then you can push past it just a little bit. Kind of reminds me of the first world in Spyro the Dragon. I definitely talked about it in my video on that game. Didn't think I'd be bringing up Spyro so much in a Tony Hawk video, but they are both PS1 games. Kind of makes sense if you don't think about it too hard. You can also go in the area below the stand's ledge. This is dangerous business. A bull is speeding around the stage in this loop here, and you can't outrun him. I tried, he always catches up. Plus, he's always laying doo-doo feces for you to run over. Not cool, bro. Take it to the toilet like a civilized being. And finally, Philadelphia. This is the last full stage of the game, and it's flat. That's its defining feature to me. Flat. Compared to New York City, it looks like this place was run over with a steamroller. And even though there are raised ledges to grind on, those are flat too. You know, looking around, it kinda has me thinking. You can really feel when a stage was designed for goals versus being just fun to skate around in. Because Hangar, that's a fun stage to skate in. Quarter pipes, half pipes, grinds, gaps. There's a lot to do going back and forth while racking up points. You can't really do that in a lot of this stage. There's no real lines or sessionable spots except for the hidden away area here. The majority of the stage is just flat. I never really thought about the level design in these games like that and I'm curious if it'll start to lean more towards one direction as we reach the later games. Because on one hand, this feels super realistic. There's not a lot of pipes and rails in place that wouldn't make sense. There are some, admittedly, but most of that kind of thing is kept in the skate park area. But then that means it's just not fun to skate in, you know, a skateboarding game. I guess it comes back to the idea of a world being designed for skating. This spot doesn't seem like it was designed for skating. Or maybe that's just me projecting the combo-heavy gameplay of the later games onto this earlier game where it wasn't really meant to be played like that. Could be a bit of both, too. 
This whole side of the stage I'm kind of fascinated with. All the way from this corner tucked away behind a building, to this plain concrete wall. They give you nothing to skate with throughout it. Not even a measly handrail to grind. There's some empty space around the edges of the skate park. Like look back here. Past that fence there's a lot of dirt. Guess there might have been some construction going on around here? And there's a train running too. Just keeps going. Will we ever see the end of it? Alright, probably not. Okay, final spot. The top of this building. It's a bit of a challenge to reach. I think I was spoiled by the THPS 1 plus 2 remake, because it was a lot easier to get up there in that game. I could just grind down this rail and boneless off the ledge to easily get enough air, but it's not enough in this game. So we'll do it the old-fashioned way. You gotta grind this long rail from the other side of the stage. Jumping a bunch will keep enough of your balance and speed to get you the full distance. And it's well worth it when you do arrive. What a cozy spot. Look at all these trash cans. Is that really necessary? For an even better spot, just wall ride this wall and grind to reach the tippy top. Look at this view. Well, it'd be more impressive if the render distance wasn't so short, but you can imagine the view. Ugh, it's annoying to fall off because you have to do the whole grinding thing to get back up. Wait, I wonder if you can... Hmm. Check out either of these videos up next. I'll probably do another video on THPS2 in the near future, so get subscribed to see that when it comes out. Like the video if you want me to get working on that ASAP. Thanks for watching and see you next time.